what's up i'm troubleshoot it's almost 2026 and it's been about six years since i last covered geyser mc which is by far the easiest way to play both using java and bedrock on the same server at the same time so you and your friends across platforms can enjoy your dedicated server with specific configs plugins and things like that all seamlessly this video did fantastic and it's a long overdue an upgrade since it just turned five years old a month ago so let's get straight into an updated 2025 26 guide for geyser mc of course though for this video you will already need a minecraft server set up whether it's paper spigot fabric or neoforge basically any moddable server can be used alongside geyser mc now if you haven't already got yourself a server then i'd highly recommend checking out this video's sponsor apex hosting apex hosting are a fantastic choice for hosting game servers with unlimited slots free subdomains 24 7 support automated backups and powerful servers simply head across to apexhost.gg slash tcno and check out the latest discount code at the very top of the page currently it's apex 25 for 25 percent off your first order when you're ready to get started just choose rent your server select your game if it's not minecraft choose your server size and in no time you should have your powerful minecraft server ready for anything a huge shout out to apex hosting for sponsoring this guide in the description down below you'll find a link to geysermc.org where you'll see exactly how this program works it's basically just a translator in between bedrock and your java server and i'm pretty sure you can use this to connect any bedrock client to any other server even without the plugin on it though that's outside of the scope of this video at the very top of the page you'll see a download button just hit this and it'll take you across to the geyser download page where we can download for fabric spigot velocity via proxy standalone neoforge or bungee cord and as i'm running a fabric server i'll be downloading the fabric jar file here now the place where you'll be putting this differs slightly between different servers but essentially inside of my server folder here there's a folder called mods which is where i'll be placing this just drag it out of your downloads into this folder and just like that geyser mc is installed if you're using spigot or something else the folder might be called plugins in which case place it in there at this point you're likely able to start your server however as this is a brand new fabric server i will need the fabric api as well so i'll download fabric api from modrinth for the correct version and i'll drop this in here as well there we go now i'm able to start up my server and geyser should be working immediately the first time you start up your server you'll see geysers setting itself up here and inside of the config folder in my case there's now a geyser fabric folder with a bunch of configuration files where we can customize how geyser works if you're inside of something like spigot you might see inside of the plugins folder next to the jar file there's a geyser folder there so the position varies slightly based on what you're running for me it's in config geyser fabric inside of here you can change how geyser works but before we do anything there's one major obstacle we need to cross obviously a bedrock client communicates differently to a bedrock server than java to java if a bedrock client tries to connect to your server it's likely not going to understand who actually owns minecraft on that device and you won't be able to play on the server at all there's two ways around this first of all in server.properties you can change online mode from true to false but this will allow anyone to join your server pretending to be anyone else instead i'd highly recommend using the official method which is another plugin from the geyser mc team called floodgate this allows java servers to work with bedrock accounts all you need to do is head across to the download page link down below or if you're already on the download page just choose floodgate at the very top then you'll see spigot fabric neoforge velocity and bungee cord for me i'll be downloading the fabric version here this takes me to modrinth i'll choose download select the correct version there we go for fabric and download moving this file into the mods folder here or the plugins folder should set it up straight away now all we need to do is restart our server and once your server starts up again inside of the either plugins folder or in my case the config folder you'll see a floodgate folder where we've got some configuration files in here now this looks a little bit different all you need to do is copy your key.pem file which appeared here so right click copy and we'll be going back a folder and placing it inside of the geyser fabric configuration folder here next to config.yml obviously this could be called just geyser geyser forge or something like that we're basically just copying this file from the one mod to the other one all you need to do now is open inside of the geyser configuration folder config.yml again you can use any text editor there's a bunch of information in this file here too much to go through in this video but 
You can customize some important things like an MOTD for your Bedrock server and even set a server name down here. I'll say Troubleshoot Geyser and the MOTD is Troubleshoot Geyser Server. There we go. Scrolling up towards the top of the file, you'll find a Java section here. What type of authentication Bedrock players will be checked against when they're logging into your server can be Floodgate, Online or Offline. Change Online to Floodgate, which is placed right above this. You can copy it and replace Online as such. Save the file and we're done here. Now we can close this file, head back to folders and start up our server for the last time. It had some issues starting up, so I just deleted this file and started my server to recreate it. When I was typing in troubleshoots, I'm pretty sure the apostrophe was causing issues. So I'll just leave that out for now. If you do want things like apostrophes, make sure to surround the entire line in double quotes just to fix things. But there we go. We're back to where we were, starting up our server again. Once it's eventually up and running, we can tab back to Minecraft where we're able to directly connect to our server. As it's running on the same PC, I can use localhost or 127.0.0.1. I'll connect to the server and as you'd expect, things work as usual, we're back in game. However, if I tab out and into Bedrock Edition right here, I can head across to Play followed by Servers at the very top. I'll hit Add Server at the top and I'll give it the name troubleshoot java the ip address is just 127.0.0.1 as it's running on the same computer that i'm hosting the server on and the port should be the same unless we changed anything i can add the server and right now you can see that there's one player online which is my java client back there and low ping if i hit play just like that we'll load into the same server as our java client there we go you can see things happening and just like that we've logged in keeping our name and everything. Now it's just a matter of finding ourselves that we are down there. Currently, the Minecraft servers are having issues, as in the login servers are down. However, you can see me moving around in both Java Edition and Bedrock on the left. We can interact with each other, type in chat, etc. Everything works as you'd hope. That's it. As long as port 19.132 is open and port forwarded the same way you did your actual normal server, Bedrock Edition clients can join in with all the fun, as you would hope, incredibly easily. Now, unfortunately, again, as the servers are down, you'll just have to take my word from it. Here's my video from five years ago where you can see my actual player skin showing as it should be on the Bedrock client, not the Java client, which is great. But anyways, besides that, there's a couple of important things that you should be aware of as a server host. As long as you're OP, you can run commands or alternatively, you can do them in the console. Using the command geyser space help or slash geyser space help in game gives you a list of commands. We can use geyser list to show all the players connected through geyser and you can also use geyser reload to reload the plugin and configuration if you changed anything, but this does kick all players when it's used. But that's it. At this point, you're able to have not only Java players, but also Xbox, Android, PlayStation, and whatever else you can think of joining your server using their official Bedrock clients as if they were joining a regular Bedrock server. Just a quick note, on the same at Geyser MC page, you can head across to the wiki at the very top, followed by Geyser or Floodgate, and you'll find FAQs as well as common issues, where you'll find very simple solutions to issues which you could be having for either Geyser or Floodgate. There's a ton of different problems here that should be solved really simply, including errors, connection issues, and things like that. Obviously, as well, if using a third-party provider like Apex Hosting to host your server, you'll just upload these mod files as we did in our own local folders, restart your server on those platforms, and they should work basically one-to-one -one the same as this. Though, in some cases, you'll need to reach out to support to open more ports and things like that, as we need both a Java Edition port and a Bedrock port. For example, on Apex Hosting's panel, to port forward a Geyser MC and allow it through their firewall, all we need to do is head across to the additional ports page down here, and we're able to enter a port number here, like Geysers 19132, and give it a name like Geyser MC, where after adding, just like that, Bedrock players should be able to connect to our server and play as expected, assuming we set it up properly. It's that simple. Once again, a huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Hopefully you found it useful. It's a lot easier than it was a couple of years ago. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.